right, so we're going to have a bit of a Q&A, but I'm going to introduce a couple of people that are involved in the production first. So, um, first off, we've got the actors, some of the actors here. So we've got Hyama, who plays Ethan, the main guy and the, the main younger guy. So, um, here we go. And next we've got Melissa, who plays... Um, <laughs> and then we've also got Ben, who plays Professor Emerson. And we've got Andrew and Julie. So, and then last of all, we've got the guy who makes all this wonderful special effects. We've got Jack. So. Yeah. Alright, so um, we'll just introduce ourselves first. So, I'm John Nico, so I'm a writer, local writer and director. Um, and yeah, so this has been, this is a project that I've, I've written as a feature film to be broken down into a web series as well. So, at the end of the day, hopefully, when we, we can get some more funding, we can finish it off as a finish off the nine episodes and then it become a full hour and a half feature. So, um, yeah, I'll let the other guys introduce themselves. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm uh, Hjalmar Swena, and uh, I'm one of the actors, and also a, uh, something of a writer and director in progress. Uh, I'm Miss Martins or Mel Martins, and yeah, I'm an actor, starting out sort of actor. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I'm Ben Todd, and I'm not in Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> you guys obviously don't like Game of Thrones either, but that's why you're here, which is cool. Um, I'm just a... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm Pam, I'm and I'm also acting. Um, my name is Jack, I'm the visual effects supervisor, uh, yeah, a bit of an aspiring artist trying to start out, and a good friend of John's, and yeah, trying to make something special with him. And uh, also thanks to everyone who came along to check it out, cheers. Alright, so I'll give you some background on um, everybody on this, on this project's volunteering, um, we all done it out of our own, out of our own time. Um, yeah, so we shot for seven days, uh, we shot both episodes over seven days, and it was Pretty good shoot. It was pretty long days and everything, but um, everybody pulled through. We had an amazing crew and cast, and yeah, it just all seemed to come together. So, yeah, if, has anybody got any questions? I do. When are we going to shoot episode three? <laughs> so, um, episode th getting episode three and more uh, up and running. Hopefully, we're going to run a crowdfunding campaign when episode two comes out, and that will help us get started at least, but hopefully we can get some funding either through the state funding bodies or through a backer from overseas. We've had some interest from over in America at the moment that we're in talks with, so um, we'll see where that goes, but it's all in the works, so there's nothing set in stone yet. For me, it's when we came out of the wormhole the first time because us falling, I think we are meant to have something to fall on, but we're like, Mini Yama, yeah, we can do it! And then we are seeing if we could fall like the highest, and I ended up getting a scar on my back. Nah, no, it's fine. Um, yeah, that was fun, and then we were hitting pine cones for a while. <laughs> we, we just try to see how far we can go, pretty much. But, I had a lot of competitions. No, we had, um, I know, the one day we worked for like 14 hours or something, and that was a, a pretty rough, long day because I think it was the alleyway scene or something like that, and um, just running, just lots of running all the time. and. Uh, and then we finished at something like 9, 30, 10 o'clock that night and then had to shoot at like 5, 30, 6 the next morning. So that was pretty rough, but, um, but we uh, put in a hell of a lot of hard work. Yeah, it was alright. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we've got Melissa, who's the main character. Yeah, Melissa, Melissa plays Ethan, the main guy. Um, yeah, so we've got Ethan, who's the main guy. Um, Mainly close to the costume is on the screen. He came in with a lab coat on the bow tie, and actually the bow tie is Ben's idea from Ben's audition. I put it into the character, so yeah, that was pretty pretty impressive. And then he wowed me with his performance as well. But I was pretty impressed. Okay. I remember there was an interesting day when we were shooting the stuff for episode one, when you see the soldiers chasing the main characters down the alleyway, and this was the first sort of big scale thing that I ever worked on and it was we, we got there and there was some guy that was working across the road I think he was a surveyor or something and we were sort of like you know everyone's running around there was like 
20 people trying to organise everything. And I, I went over and had a talk to him and I said, oh, I'm really sorry, I'm sure that you're getting paid to work here, but we're kind of shooting this thing about aliens and we sort of need this alleyway. And he's just like, yeah, no worries, man, I'm getting paid by the hour, take as long as you want. <laughs> but he was really cool and so that all worked out. And then we had the, um, the DOP sitting in the back of a car with the boot up with the camera out the back driving down the alleyway and like all these soldiers running around with guns and it was like really guerrilla filmmaking it was just yeah it was it was an interesting day and it was pretty funny and it's kind of uh, stuck out of my memory i guess you could say well of course i, I had heaps but my probably one of my enduring memories was we were shooting that first scene when soldiers are running into the houses and stuff and um at one point one woman came like we blocked off the street and stuff and we had people walk past and the woman came up and said you know, if you were in America, you would have been shot by now. Because <laughs> the cops would have rocked up and blown your heads off. And I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. But yeah. And then, oh, like two hours later, the cops rock up. <laughs> One cop rocks up. And I go over to him and he goes, it's the end of my shift. Is anything wrong? And I'm like, nah, it's all good. Maybe you shouldn't move it. He's like, good, because I don't want to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably, probably like, because oh, I was crapping myself walking out of the cop car going, man, this is, we're going to get shut down and we're going to be group virtually because we're gonna get half a day in line. Um, I think a combination of things. I've always been a huge sci-fi fan and um, I think obviously from making that but I think the main thing was have, coming up with the time travel element of the fact that the professor's in the first episode is shot and he's dying. So the whole time travel element was really something I wanted to play on and um, toy with the audience like later in the next episode it really comes um, comes out but toying with the is it whatever happens happens can you change the future and can you change the past and also the wormhole technology is always a, like being able to travel faster but then the whole if you were starting off making wormhole technology it's never going to be stable the first time around and that's especially when they hit the ground like that it's mainly because um, they're not used to it they don't know how to land whereas the, the soldiers have been trained to so yeah some of that and then I also I like real strong drama so having that dramatic element and really pushing your audience and confronting them, doing it in a way where it's not overkill, yeah. maybe a little bit overkill, but not yeah, to the sense where it's just, it's not gore porn, it's actually <laughs> emotional <laughs> impact, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take for example the alien shot in the first, um, first episode. Um, so the the alien was the the model as we call it was built um, by a guy that works at Rising Sun Pictures that I know a friend of mine called Albert. Uh, he, he spent about three weeks building it, um, and then I take the model, uh, build the skeleton underneath it, which is called a rig, which is like basically just a lot of maths. That probably took about two three weeks, and then it had to be textured, so you're painting on all the skin, so the blood and the look of it, etc., and all the bumps and everything, you paint that up as sort of like you like you would paint a picture on a canvas. Uh, that took probably another two weeks. And then to render it and light it and composite it, a really good friend of mine, David Catamol, he's also at um, Rising Sun Pictures. And these people, by the way, they all, they've worked on big films, like um, they've done work on Hunger Games, uh, Wolverine, like they're, they're really good at what they do. And that probably took another three weeks. Uh, and, and also, sorry, it also had to be animated by a character animation, like the people that do all the movement for the characters that you see on like Pixar films and whatnot. Um, the animation took five weeks. So those shots all together, I think, covered less than 10 seconds um, in the production, <laughs> but took, you know, like four or five people months and months to do. So there's a lot of work that goes into it. And obviously, you know, since we're all just, you know, volunteering and, and we're not funded yet, fingers crossed, um, yeah, it does take a fair bit of time to get it all done but properly anyway, at least to a point that it looks reasonable. You have to be pleased with the reviews then, and have said that uh, it's good to see a weird series that's actually got some cool like, actual effects that are yeah. Like yeah, well, and that's, that's, that's another thing about doing something like this. It's pretty ambitious to begin with. I know that um, when John was pitching the idea originally to a few people to see if maybe anyone was interested, you know, pretty much the, the general consensus was, you know, you try to do a CG alien, you, you know, it's not going to happen. And it's just one of those, I guess, it's one of those niche areas that, you know, a lot of people don't really know much about, so they tiptoe around it and, you know, use practical stuff instead. I 
think uh, when, when John first um, sent me the script and I read it, I think my first question to him was like, yeah, this is great, yeah. How the hell are you going to do it? Like, I had no idea. He was like, oh, there's lots of visual effects artists around the place that want to work and no one's given it. So they um, yeah, don't want to just prove themselves. I think they have. Um, a visual effects question again. Um, <laughs> are there, uh, is there going to be a, a lot more visual effects coming up in the, in the coming episodes? Because you've got quite a bit so far. Is it something that's going to keep coming? Or is it going to... Hi, hi, Sam. Hi, hi Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Sam is also a visual effects artist. A pretty, a pretty good one. He, he, oh. um, he, he's done a bit of work for um, the second episode. Yeah. If we going forward, um, I, I read a copy of the script a while ago, and yeah, it's going to be pretty, pretty heavy, pretty full on. Yeah. So just asking, so I know. Uh, yeah, 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 right. <laughs> 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 you, you can tell from the piece that it sort of intrinsically relies upon um, visual effects. So I, I guess going forward, as um, the story thickens and things start getting a little bit, as we up the ante, so to speak, um, it should uh, continue to have more and more visual effects and also the, the fact that you know everyone gets better as well and you know, like the core team there's a couple of people that, that are work, working on more and more films and you know I've sort of learned a lot you know I'm much better at what I do now than I was a year ago when I started working on it also yeah I think this is, there's a lot more to come if we can keep it going and you were very good a year ago as well so um, yeah so that's the big thing with um hopefully through the crowdfunding and also securing some other funding because, um, yeah, it's not cheap to make these episodes and it's something that we want to get out there and want people to be able to watch. And so, yeah, um, through the crowdfunding, so that hopefully we'll watch the episode two. And, I mean, you don't have to donate a dollar if you want. And, um, yeah, and we'll, try and, we'll also try and get some backing from um, other sources. So. Um. This is the first time for me really, well, first time doing a web series, uh, but also the first time in pretty much all of my in life where I've actually had a main role, or a big main role, or whatever. And, um, and, uh, and I'm still relatively new uh, to film and all that, so every time I do some sort of film or um, I watch it back and I see stuff that I hate that I did and, and I learn from it, you know, and, um, and you know, getting to be the lead in this. And, um, you know, I get, I get to, to watch it and um, see to do well or whatever. And, um, it's all about learning in this thing and just about the best um, learning experience I've had so far in regards to film. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I have to say the same thing because like, I mostly do short films and then kind of, kind of dust it and you don't ever see it again. But with this, we're all together like pushing for it and you know, next year we're like kind of politics and helping you know get more views or whatever but yeah and I don't feel like I've got really like even though I don't come to see you guys I just like closer with you guys and the back to back filming I love that like you know you have to get early and then you know get that really like and that's what it would be like for a professional actor. So in that sense, you know it's a good taste to yeah get to do it for you, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> 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 this is the first thing I've done um, on film um, because I've both had to do theatre. So the easy thing with theatre is that you do a show and you forget about it. Then you have brand new people in the next night and then you keep this going. Well, that was last night, even if I was terrible, I could do be better tonight because I've got brand new people in. Um, that's where something like this is up for eternity now for people to see. Um, and I'm going to. I think after watching the little bits that I've done, and I've only done little bits, I completely change. With these guys there, the dedication that as as well, the dedication on set was amazing. Put um, 110% in, and then also, especially when doing mainly theatre, there's always the curse of being a theatre actor trying to get on the screen, mate. Right? Um, with theatre acting, you project, and you've got to project, and a lot of the time you get, and I find when you do auditions, you get theatre actors come in and they, they overplay it, and they're playing to an audience. But, Normally it would be 50 minutes away, but they're, they're not. There is no audience. So then, a lot of the time they overacted, but Ben came in and he pitched it perfectly, and straight off the bat. And I, I admire that, because that's something that a lot of theatre actors don't normally achieve naturally, as easy as Ben did, which is good. So, um, and yeah, and Shiyama, like, put in 110% in 
all the way through, ask like asking questions to develop the characters and the character, um, and yeah, giving ideas and that kind of stuff. That was a big thing with me was, and I, I'm a collaborative director where I we sat down and we did workshops and we did workshopping, and so we sat down and took the script. And these guys came up with some great ideas, and I can't say yes to all of them because sometimes it's just a different story. But a lot of the times it was just like dialogues and tweaking that really just brought the characters to life. When you were <laughs> about one of the memorable things at our very last production meeting, which was the night before we started shooting, I think, um, which is the first time I heard John talk about why he was doing all of this, and he basically, which motivated me a lot, and he said that I wanted to, he wanted to make good stuff and show people that Adelaide can produce stuff. Because you don't have to go to Sydney to do it. You don't have to go to Melbourne or. Or Queensland to do it, that we can produce quality um, film stuff and sci-fi stuff, and we've got decent, um, you know, visual effects people here in Adelaide because we get looked over and it's about time to stop. And, and that for me was a big, big motivator. Going, well, this is something to commit to, and I, I was really blown away. I've got to say, yeah, I, I, um, I agree with that because. Um, uh, like one of the things that really impressed me was um, I've been on short films and stuff where uh, there's been like three people in the crew, you know, or, or, um, or but this uh, rocked up to, um, you know, one of the first production meetings we had with everyone and it was just heaps of people and I was like, sweet, like got all these dedicated people that really believe in this project and like Ben said about like there's so, there is so much talent here in Adelaide and it's really frustrating being an actor in um, Adelaide because I hear about all these um, parts that all these movies that have been made and uh, I'm like, oh, sweet, like, we oh, have an audition. And, like, they've already cast the main roles in Sydney and Melbourne. And, and even though it's SA that are casting them, so just having everyone involved that's like Adelaide is, is great. There's so many people coming out of acting school that um, are so talented that they get zero work. And um, I'm just like, sweet, I'll use it with my thing, I'll pitch him with John. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah, I mean, definitely, I mean, you did give me John, who's the guy with the accent in the second episode. Awesome. Um, yeah, he, he, he just kind of brought a whole new level to the character. He was just kind of a generic bad guy, and yeah, he walked up and he, he asked me a million questions about the character's motivation. And at the time, I was, I, I think I'd slept probably a total of five hours for the seven days, in which it was like day seven of the shoot and I was just exhausted but I, I put the effort into ask like telling him like and, as I have to but then yeah he just took it in the strides but I think my big my biggest thing at the end of the day is um, the way I the people I get involved it's at the end of the day I, I want them to be good I, I like people without egos and people that are good people and at the end of the day I, I mean talent isn't everything and that was one big thing when we worked on set by not having by choosing people that don't have ego that don't have that over self importance I think and that team the team players it really helped the 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 shoot go so well because at the end of the day we sh that fourteen hour day that they mentioned before a lot of times I've been on small f shoots like that and you get to the fourteen or thirteen hour mark and it, like people getting tired and when there's all the egos flying around it just becomes this complete mess and it falls apart and you end up pretty much wasting your time. Whereas everybody on the crew was like, okay, in the cast was like, let's just get it done, let's do it as best we can. We're exhausted, but it's gonna be worth it. So, and I, yeah, I, I think that was the, the big thing was, uh, I was blown away by how many people were motivated to keep going and I really thank everybody that was part of it. Cool, all right, and anybody got one last question? So how did the um, interest out of America come about? Um, just through YouTube, so, because on YouTube it's, Worldwide, that's the beauty. I think, especially the webs open up for anywhere in the world to be able to produce good material. I mean, it's not just in Sydney now that has the capabilities, the, the distribution, I guess, for movies. And I think YouTube's open up the, the pretty much open it up for anybody because there's people in the weirdest parts of America where, at the end of the day, they're probably like such as. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're producing amazing web content that's getting them highly successful. And they're not in LA. They're not, yeah. And I mean, there's people here in Adelaide that's doing quite well as well. So, yeah, that getting the worldwide um, coverage through YouTube is really a big bonus and something that um, 
a lot of people has the chance to pretty much harness that um, audience, and that's what we just got to do, and hopefully hit the right mark. It's probably a really good time for it right now as well because there's so many cult followings for such um, low budget films out there at the moment and they're just gaining so much momentum and this is how we're going to introduce the new generation of filmmakers and it's going to be really exciting in the next sort of decade. Cool. Alright, um, just, just to finish up, so we've got, you can check out uh, check it out on the YouTube channel which is under John Deco and Google it or you search on YouTube and you'll be able to find it in episode one or something. We also shot production diaries by Manuel who's shooting the panel at the moment. He faithfully shot so much behind the scenes, it was good. Um, and we've cut together day like daily production diaries so you can see the behind the scenes and us um, carrying like idiots for making this movie. And also there's trailers and there's um, a few other content stuff up. There's um, extra videos that give you more of the story of the world as well that we're creating. So um, yeah, we're also on Twitter and we're on Facebook and yeah, and so episode two is coming up so just keep an eye out for the crowdfunding and if you, just any little small contribution will help. So, so thank you everybody for coming and I'd like to thank everybody that's on the panel, Ben, Mel, Hiyama, Pam and Jack and so thank you guys for coming and have a watch and the second episode will be up soon. So thank you. Thank you. You and your little girlfriend will be coming with us. <laughs>